Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to price Christmas lights and if this helps you out, subscribe to my channel and if you want the spreadsheet that we're going to use for this video, go follow me on Instagram, DM me and I'll get that to you as soon as possible. I'm going to show you this house because it's a perfect representation of all the different difficulty levels. Easy, medium, hard and difficult. So here we've got 77 feet of easy. Okay, we're calling this easy level because all you need is a small ladder, lean it against the gutters there and you can just slide in the clips. Now, if they weren't clips and you had to staple, that would be a different story and that's why I'll show you this. This is what I want to show you. Even though this 37 feet is easy, if you look closely, you'll have to staple each light up there or use gutter clips. Now this customer wanted to keep the lights up year round, so I stapled them underneath because the white wire blends in really well. Because of the staples and because of the gutter clips, if you went that route, I would change the difficulty level from easy to medium. And here we've got 35 feet of medium. In this section that we call medium, it's not so much that it's that much harder than an easy, but there is a little higher level of risk involved, plus you need a taller ladder. Okay, so we've got 120 feet of hard. So this window eave, those peaks, and what I call the crease going up to the top of the house is all hard. And pretty obvious why, pretty dangerous. Uh, to get to the side of the eaves, you're going to have to walk on the roof, and that could be that's very steep right there. Plus those peaks, you're going to need somebody holding the ladder because it's not going to be stable, or walking all the way on top of the roof, reaching over and sliding in the cliffs. So to me, that's difficult, and that's why I'm going to call this hard. Okay, so we've got 69 feet of difficulty from this corner, these two peaks, all the way to the top chimney. Okay, now this section we're calling difficult because it's really, really hard. Not only is it hard because we're going to have to get on the shingles to slide in the clips up top there, but it's really high. This is about 30 feet. You're going to need a special ladder that's high enough and you're going to need somebody to hold it for you. So you factor all that in, we're calling it difficult. Okay, we've got 301 feet. Now we want to enter in all those totals in each section of the spreadsheet. Now keep in mind, I've created this spreadsheet specifically for roof lines, not bushes or wreaths or anything like that, just roof lines. All right, I walked the property with you and I showed you a little bit of how I do it while I'm out there, but now I want to go in a little deeper and I want to go over the spreadsheet with you and I want to show you exactly how I use it. Now if you want this spreadsheet, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram, shoot me a DM, and I will give you this spreadsheet so you can use it. But right now, we're going to go into it. Now I'm going to start with labor prices. This is not materials whatsoever, it's just labor by the foot and if you wanted to input these same numbers, go for it. I'm not steering you wrong whatsoever. But I do want to talk about the column section that has difficult in it. Um, I've never gone below $6.50 on a difficult section and I've never gone over $10. Now I, that's the same with rental. Never, I've never had to go over $10, but you have to be there and look at the property, figure out what your time, what your value is worth when you're there at the house. But just to give you a base guideline, I've never had to go over $10 on difficult, and I've never gone below $6.50. Okay, now moving on to the materials section here. You don't want to copy and paste because this is based off of how much you paid for it at your place where you buy the materials. So, uh, but what you may need help with is how to mark up, especially a rental versus a purchase price. So a general rule would be to mark it up for rental based on how much you paid for it. So for instance, example, if I paid 98 cents for the light bulb because I get discounts and that kind of thing, I mark it up to $1.49. For the purchase price, you want to mark that up based on the shelf price. So what a customer would pay when they get to the store. Now, just to reiterate here, I don't know if I mentioned this, but these prices are what the customers are going to pay. All right? So that's what you want to enter here. Now, I also have there's some materials that are going to pretty much stay the same at every house you go to, kind of like Z-wire. Um, you can pretty much factor that 15 feet are going to go to every house. Uh, on average, about every house has about four end caps. And adapters, that's going to change on the size of the linear feet. So if you've got like a house of 150 feet, you may put in 10. But on the example, 
that we walked through together, there were 20, and that's pretty standard for a 300 foot house, but also there's a lot of peaks. And when you have a lot of peaks, that's when you're gonna have a lot more adapters. And then you're gonna have one timer at every house. So once you enter these numbers in here, you pretty much don't have to do it again for the rest of the Christmas light season. And now I wanna go over this last section that's a constant that once you enter these numbers in, you won't have to change them anymore. And that's the additional labor price percentage. So uh, you've got a takedown percentage. Um, I keep mine at zero because I think it's an incentive to tell customers that it's not going to cost anything for me to take them down. Now the rehang price is based on when they purchase and hang the lights from me. So this 75% is what it would, it's 75% of the rental price so that way they have an incentive to buy the materials from me rather than rent so you got to have it make a little bit of a discount in the future for them so when they buy it it's going to be cheaper than renting it in the future if that makes any sense now that we have our constants entered in let's start with the filling out the form and let's use the house that we were looking at as an example on how to fill this out so let's call this house mr smith and uh, the location of the lights, that means uh, do we do the front or the sides? Uh, so we, in this case, we're going to do the front and both sides. Uh, because sometimes as the installer, you get to the house and you think you should do the south side of a house, but maybe the customer didn't want to do that and the estimator didn't write that down so you don't have to worry about it. Um, so it's really good to be clear on this section what areas you're doing and then the location of the timer that could be really important because sometimes the homeowner may say I want the timer plugged in on the west side and then you go check the the power and there's no power there and there's an issue so you want to be clear as to where the timer should go so that you can check for power and then that'll give you an idea how much z-wire you're going to need from you know the connecting the timer to the roof line strands so it's really important and in this case they wanted it on the west side of the house and then the colors of the light bulbs that's really important so this one they wanted warm white and the color of the strand now I usually have the estimators decide what color the strand should be and then recommend that to the customer I don't really think it's a good idea to show them a, a selection of lights because they could pick a color that's that's really you've seen in the past that doesn't work very well. So it's good to try to match the color with what you know your colors of strand look like. So in this case, they wanted white because the paneling was white. So this one's pretty obvious. Okay, so once you have that filled out, then let's use the measurements that we had at the house. So easy was 77 feet, medium was 35 feet, hard was 120 feet, and difficult was 69 feet. Now, in this example that we were looking at, there wasn't any need for gutter clips or staples, and there was no obstacles with trees on the both sides, the front, the top, there was nothing. So we're just, in this case, we're sticking with these measurements. Now, if there were obstacles, you would enter those numbers in here, like so on the easy section, if there was a, let's call it a, a garden gnome that was so big that you couldn't get to the gutters, um, you may want to enter that in as that as the same amount of feet. Or you could just do, you know, 10 feet of it was hard because of that gnome that was there. So, and also if there are gutter clips, like let's say uh, this was an easy section, but there are, let's say, the whole row of 77 feet needs gutter gutter clips, so you would enter in 77 feet there. So, and again, we're based on these numbers, this number, it's all tallying up right here for you, so you don't have to do any math or get on any calculator, it's all here. Uh, but in this case, like I told you before, there's no staples or need for gutter clips, and there's no need for, there's no obstacles in the way, so we are good. So we could just stop right here. There's 301 feet. I would tell Mr. Smith, hey, the rental price is $1,393.86. Or you could purchase these lights for $1,775.21. And if you purchase them, 
and I were to rehang them every year, it would just be $1,045.40. So I don't know if, if that helps you, but there it is, and it's simple and easy to use.